podcast to help choose home when care is needed. A podcast all about the benefits and value of receiving care in a place that you likely feel most comfortable, wherever you call home. I'm your host, Marilee Orsini, and I've been involved in health care at home since 1981. Each episode, I'll be talking with a guest who will help us in our quest to educate about health care at home. So let's get started on today's episode number 10. Our guest today is Peter Sosnow, an integration leader at Humana at Home. Peter, however, was literally born into a home care family, and he's been on the care managed side of home care, first with Senior Bridge and now with Humana, helping change how the world receives and delivers health care at home. Can you talk to me about your, your first job in home care? Born into home care, I like that um, expression, um, Merrily. When I was born into home care, I started with a uh, company, Patient Care Incorporated, uh, which is a New York metro area, uh, was a New York metro area home care company. And I started in their IV division, um, working in their pharmacy as a pharmacy technician, actually, uh, making some of the medications for some of their patients. The business had expanded, um, and I think it's good to bring it up in in this type of call because technology... um, and innovation is part of what makes home care so popular. And it was evolving at that time where more medications could be delivered in the home rather than in the hospital um, setting, inpatient or even outpatient. So we were making, at that point, medications getting referrals from physicians um, for various treatments, and I was a pharmacy technician at that time. So the business was really expanding and evolving, um, doing more in the home at mm-hmm. that time. Back in 1991, if you want to get your history books out. Right. Put a, put a date next to that. Well, and then when um, your father started Cambridge Companions, which is a care-managed model of care, which has now been sold and changed, and I believe that model is currently what Humana at Home provides. That's right. And they've taken that model and scaled it um, immensely. Um, it's been incredibly successful for Humana as one of their what they call pillars of their uh, future service, doing more in the home. And the idea merrily around uh, that business was um, having a caregiver work with a nurse and social worker um, together. And that was somewhat um, innovative at the time. And what that allowed us to do is take on more complex types of patients um, and clients, as we call them at at Senior Bridge, where um, if it was uh, more complex than what maybe a caregiver could do on their own, such as a home health aide, they had the ability to call on a nurse and work together with that nurse, a little different than just a supervisory uh, piece of it, where the nurse would do actively do work on behalf of that family and that patient, care coordination, medication management, um, consulting. Um, so it went above and beyond just the supervision of the case, but more actively being involved in managing and care coordination, which now is um, such a huge business out there in the marketplace, and we've now expanded that um, within Humana that concept of working with families to working with all of Humana members who may need care management services. And I did see, and this will be a wonderful thing for consumers to know about, particularly if they have Medicare Advantage plans that are covering their care. And um, you want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, CMS just today, I believe, or yesterday, made an announcement that Advantage plans are now going to cover personal care services. Yeah, I think it's a very exciting development. It's a recognition of what the value of what home care can deliver. And CMS talked about different ways that you can deliver um, home care, something like a transition program out of a hospital where uh, home care companies are are typically used in that fashion, um, but maybe they've been used in a limited way. Here they can be expanded potentially and do more around a transition home and stay with that patient longer than they would in a typical situation, such as a Medicare home health agency, which may have a limited um, um, service, uh, may have limited, uh, may be more limited by a benefit. But here, this can be expanded um, into new benefits to do more for those patients. So I think it's a wonderful development for the home care industry to be recognized this way. <clears throat> and I think you'll see Medicare Advantage plans uh, begin to really start to utilize this service in the future as they get more comfortable with working with um, home care agencies. Well, I know one of the things that when um, 
Humana bought Senior Bridge, that one of the things that they did was introduce that concept of care, the care management component um, into the mix. And do you want to talk about how, from a consumer standpoint, again, we're, we're gearing this to people who um, are looking to help choose home. So talk about the importance of that care management component. And, and you've said it allows you to take care of more complex cases, but for someone who's never experienced home care at all, what's the difference that a care manager brings to the table? Yeah, for the consumer there, working with a nurse and a social worker allows them to um, receive a more comprehensive level of care. Generally, the home health aid works on um, sort of the, what we'll call the hands-on care um, and some of the companionship type aspects of care, and they're wonderful at that. But there's, there's times when a, uh, someone needs to talk to the doctor about coordinating medications or maybe changing medications or maybe talking about a, a condition or maybe going to the doctor with someone to interact with that doctor, or really dynamic family situations. All of the above usually requires the support of a nurse, and to have that nurse available on the care team and and involved um, just leads to a better uh, sort of comprehensive type of service. Think of it a little bit as a kind of a specialist kind of coming in. You have your primary care, but maybe you need uh, a specialist coming in who's um, cardiac uh, physician, and uh, that person joins the care team. Here, they're fully integrated, and it's like that cardiac uh, physician is on that care team. So it's a very comprehensive uh, type of service. And it's something, um, Merrily, almost you have to experience it. Um, Sometimes it's hard to describe, um, but when you have a nurse and a social worker involved, two professionals who bring the the medical point of view and the psychosocial point of view, you really have the comprehensive type of care um, being delivered in addition to the hands-on care that a home health aide and companion care that a home health aide will deliver. Because when someone has never experienced home care, um, they've been, you've, most people have had someone in the hospital at one time or another, but not everyone has experienced home care. Um, and one of the things I love saying to people is home care is not a one-size-fits-all product. Uh, it really does vary. So can you talk to me about the types of situations that would make more sense to need a care manager involved in that process versus just an aide that comes in? It's a little difficult. It's actually easier. Um, you almost have to take the Pepsi challenge and try it, I like to say, with care management. But in general, to build on what I said earlier, kind of the more complicated your situation is and the more needs you have requires a larger care team. And care managers are freed up to deal with these situations different than maybe a supervisor would or somebody who's not available. But care managers are kind of dedicated concierge-type nurses and social workers, and they have clinical expertise. So the more complicated your situation may be with conditions, um, if you have multiple uh, diagnoses, uh, if you have uh, dynamics at play with family dynamics, distant family members, um, the more um, issues there are with the situation of the caregiving situation, the more you're inclined to use care management. There isn't a a one-size-fits-all, but that's generally the rule. The lighter the case is, um, the less acute, the less needy, you may not need a care manager. The more complex it is, yes, we recommend having a care manager involved and somebody that's dedicated versus someone who's just a supervisor or not um, doing specific care management. And I have not read the CMS um, ruling about allowing the Medicare Advantage to cover this personal care service, but does it allow finally some care for the chronic long-term care needs of our aging society? My understanding with the benefit is that it can incorporate um, many different um, aspects. So it can incorporate chronic conditions. It can incorporate transitional care from hospitals. And it's fairly maybe broad how I've read it, how it can be utilized. Um, So specific um, plans will want to compete and offer different benefits based on how much they value home care. So I think, Marilee, to your point, if they say we've identified a a CHF population with CHF and they're diabetic too, we may want to offer that benefit to all those people um, because we're going to use 
home care to manage that population. There are some software programs out now that are helping people navigate the discharge planning process and help them decide what kinds of clients or patients work better in what setting. Um, do you Is care management involved in that component, do you know? I, I think it can be. Care management um, is sometimes difficult to de- exactly determine when it's needed. Um, Humana uses its own um, criteria and algorithms to determine when somebody is appropriate for care management. But a software system, unless they're using specific algorithms that spits out when we're going to use a care manager, they may have trouble identifying it. It's more, um, it's used more word of mouth and uh, personally recommended versus electronic systems. So most electronic systems from from my experience don't have care management recommendations or when to use a care manager merely. Well, that certainly leaves great opportunity for you in the future to integrate when exactly in, in which situations does it does it benefit? Because uh, I think the um, this whole movement has to do with the value and benefit of home care, correct? As being the least expensive setting to provide care? Without question. I think merely it's identifying the complex patients, whoever's paying for that care, whether it's an individual, whether it's an insurance company or a, or a government payer, and then getting them to an organization um, that has a care management component. So um, as a rule of thought, it's um, a population, if you move to sort of a population kind of health model, which is, um, you know, that's a, that's a popular trend now in healthcare, and if you try to identify that population, generally the percentage of that population, the rule of thumb is anywhere around 20%, 10 to 20% may need some type of additional um, care management. And as you move up to the top 1%, obviously they may need more intense care management. If you move to the 20%, they may need more telephonic care management, as an example or um, different types of uh, models of management. Um, so you can be creative there. Um, so there's, you know, one size sometimes doesn't fit all. The human senior bridge way was nurse and social work, but there are models of care management out there that incorporate um, health advisors, health coaches, um, different types of experience. A care manager doesn't necessarily have to be licensed. It doesn't have to be a nurse or social worker. It can be others. And it can as we move into innovative models, can be incorporated now into technology, um, where a uh, sort of artificial intelligence, um, Alexa, if you will, can potentially be and offer some care management type of services. Now, that is interesting. Um, I had not heard that before, that um, we're thinking about using artificial intelligence as a component of our home care provision. Yeah, I mean, you're going to look at artificial intelligence, you're going to look at sort of passive technology such as sensors, and you're going to look at robotics. Uh, Three interesting technologies that can be utilized in the home, some of that will provide information, um, such as uh, it can offer a video into the home, uh, like a robot could move around the home. Um, Sensors can give you an idea of what's going on in the home, who's moving around the home. And uh, AI can potentially, based on those readings, uh, produce a care plan recommendations. So um, maybe uh, we can help with walking, or we can help with exercise, or we can play some stimulating games. Um, It's moving in that direction. Um, So they'll either it'll complement an existing care manager, a human care manager, or a care management system. But now these new technologies are all going to be there to support and to provide, let's call it additional caregiving and care management. That is a pretty interesting look at the at the future. So the elder tech, um, does adding the technology, the AI, the robotics, and the sensors, do adding those types of technology increase the cost that we're trying to keep down? Well, I, I think yes, that is it. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to just hit on the cost aspect of it. You're trying to get um, better quality in the home and better outcomes. And sometimes the, these um, systems have have a better way of getting some information. So, for example, a someone's not may not be in the home 24 hours a day. 
So what happens when that person um, leaves or that care manager or caregiver leaves? You might be able to get additional readings to provide different information there. So well, cost is certainly a component. Um, you don't want to necessarily skimp on cost because you may not get the outcomes you want. You want to try to get the best information to get the best outcomes is how I think it's um, going to be viewed. And then the second piece um, to that is um, not everyone um, wants a caregiver in the home or wants a caregiver for four hours or eight hours or 12 hours. People need different solutions. And uh, we, had a, we had a situation with one of our um, Humana clients where they didn't want somebody in the home, but they were okay with a robot. They just didn't want a smaller home. They didn't want to be intruded upon. And we used the robot there um, as a complement. So sometimes it's preference to remain in the home, in my our view, you need many solutions. I think technology is able to add another solution um, when someone doesn't want somebody in the home or to complement when someone isn't there and can't be there for cost reasons or other reasons. It's exciting to me to see that from the perspective of a company as large as Humana, that you all are being very innovative and creative in terms of thinking about the future and how to provide that care at home. Um, do you see this happening in the industry, industry-wide, or just within your business? I think it can happen industry-wide. I think that the advantage of a company like Humana is they have certainly the resources to explore um, and innovate on a different scale than others. Um, other companies will look to partner uh, to do some of this. So, um, you know, your local home health agency may not have those resources, but they'll maybe be able to develop some partnerships with a robotics company um, different than maybe Humana, which can develop some of that internally. So I think the, the uh, model will take different shapes. So, um, and I think that's, there's so much going on in home care, and home care has to be collaborative. I think as we started this conversation, really, that every home care company can do everything, nor should they. They may not have that capability, but the partnership and collaboration among um, technology companies and service providers I think will happen and accelerate. Thank you so much for listening today. And a special thanks to our sponsors and partners, Access, National Association for Home Care and Hospice, and Core Cubed. You can find more on our website, helpchoosehome.com, and on social media. Join us, want you, to spread the word and help choose home when care is needed.